Hello, and welcome to CoAbe's Meet the Author interview series, where we sit down with authors from our latest edition of the CoAbe Journal. My name is Kristen Hempel, and I am CoAbe's Region 1 representative and chair of the Students as Leaders Task Force. I am so excited to be here today with you and with these esteemed authors. Today, we have Laura Porfirio, Megan Lindsay, and Arnold Montiel. Unfortunately, Haziel Lopez and Ana Chavarin were not able to join us, but we so appreciate their contributions to the article as well. Their article is titled, Students Take the Lead, Promoting Diversity and Inclusion in Adult Education Through Ambassador Training. And this article was published in our recent issue titled, Programs Succeed When Learners Lead. Before we begin, can each of you please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are? Hello, my name is Megan Lindsay, and I am an office coordinator at office coordinator at the Eastern Iowa Community College in Davenport, Iowa, where I graduated 11 years ago with my GED. Hi, everybody. My name is Laura Porfirio. I live in Tucson, Arizona, and I've been a longtime adult educator. Uh, involved with CoWave for quite some time. Right now, I am a freelance, independent um, consultant trainer in the field of adult ed, and I'm still serving on the board of our state association for adult ed here in Arizona. And I'm on the task force with uh, Kristen and Megan and some other folks for students as leaders with CoWave. Hello, my name is Arnold Montiel Jr. I'm an adult education learner at Pima Community College Adult Education in Tucson, Arizona. Well, we clearly have some experts in the field with us today. Um, to start us off, I'd like to take a peek sort of behind the curtain uh, to, to hear why you decided to write this article. What brought you all together? What motivated you? Um, as Laura stated earlier, I'm on the Students as Leader Task Force with COABE. Um, where I encouraged myself to join to get the experience um, that I didn't really get in the classroom, that hands-on work um, that I, I was hoping I could transfer into um, my work. And in that process, we started talking about strengths versus barriers. And um, it was fresh in my mind since I just started earning my bachelor's degree and was working on the adult theory. Um, and it, it just cl cl clicked that we needed to make something happen. And uh, with Laura's experience, um, here we are today. So I, I, I did it because it was another experience to um, add to my resume, another time to grow and do it with people that I, I could trust while I was doing it. Thank you. Exactly, Megan. Um, it was such a great experience to write this article with the student leaders. Um, kind of part of where this came from for uh, what instigated this process of us writing this article, to get article together is that we were asked not once but twice to present on DEI in the field of adult ed. We were asked to present at the COA virtual um, DEI conference. We did a panel there. And then from there, somebody from Arizona said, you have to present for Arizona. And after doing that a couple of th times with this amazing team, I thought we have got to capture this. We have got to document this amazing learning that we've been doing together. Because of course, as we kept presenting, the more we kept learning together and getting deeper into the research and about DEI and, and the success of our ambassadors training program. So yeah, we just had to document this for real. like in writing. Um, one of the main reasons that I wrote, um, that I um, participated in this um, happily and um, eagerly was um, that I'm, I'm a ambassador and I wanna promote diversity and inclusion in adult education. And I felt that through this journal, it would reach more people. My story would reach more people and um, it have a chance to, um, maybe inspire somebody. Thank you all. I know I poured over the article as I did uh, with the, the workshop as well, but um, I'm curious from your perspective, what do you hope adult education practitioners will uh, take away that benefits their learners? 
I think the most important thing to benefit the learners is adding um, opportunities for students to work on community projects in the classroom, working on those social skills, how to be a leader in the classroom. I, as, as a student with a learning disability, I hid in the back corner. So I, yeah, they taught me A, Bs and Cs and one, two, threes here, but I didn't quite get those leadership skills on how I was gonna take them and move forward with them um, to the next stage. And that that's really, um, that took a lot of work from COABE building that in me and the, the strength to be like, hey, I can do this even though I've not done it before. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that they give those skills to the students as well when they're in the classroom and building that right into the curriculum, the reflection of, of what they have done and not what they did do in the past, but what they're doing in the future. So I hope that it just helps teachers know there's more than just ABCs and one, two, threes in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, um, I it was such a deeply meaningful and rich experience doing this with our, the students. And, and I wanna make it really clear that we intentionally engaged ourselves, one practitioner, teacher, you know, edu ed educator, with some students that are at various points, and some of them are even teachers now. I mean, Megan is a teacher and Anna Chavanese is, is a teacher now too, but we engaged with research and theory about us and our work and our lives as students and our experiences as students. And I just think it, I think it, sh hopefully it'll resonate with all of the readers that um, you don't have to separate the subjects of research and theory from them and the practice and how much amazing uh, you know advice that we can get from learners, especially the ones who have developed their voice and leadership skills through ambassador program. They are ready to be right there with us and help us uh, you know apply all those theories and research um, in the work that we do. So yeah, thanks, Megan and Arnold and the other two. I think um, practitioners can take away from this. Um, I think um, we, um, our team has done extensive research and we, we um, quoted um, professors and um, uh, educators and scientists. And um, we have references to back up all, all, all everything that we wrote. And I think um, the most important part is that um, we're just um, everyday ordinary people. and. Um, we're telling everyday ordinary stories. And, and I think um, somewhere down the line and somewhere in this great nation that it'll resonate with somebody, um, no matter what age they are. I'm, a, I'm in my early 60s now and, and I just kind of got this little thing going, but um, it, it's, it's awesome. It's just transformed my life in every, in every aspect, my job, my family life, my, my, every, my school, even my um, studies. It's affected me in every way. It's it's very positive. I think um, practitioners um, could um, implement some of these practices on some of their students, and um, they will see that um, just like me, um, they will get um, benefits right away from their students. You will see the encouraging. Um, it's just encouraging, and and it's good for our self esteem. It just moves us forward. I, I love uh, hearing from all of you. It's it's so inspiring to, to think about how, you know, what, what you're writing about, how that can change lives, both in terms of the practitioners, um, in, in terms of, you know, how, how they move through space, but also the lives of the learners in our classroom. I'm curious now um, about at the program level, like wh what are you hoping readers can take away from the article that might impact the program itself? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, the one thing I wish everyone would take from this article is that we're all different and we all bring a different perspective. When I met Arnold, I felt like a role model to him for the first time. And I wanted to include him, which is why we brought Arnold into this, to the, but someone also included me before. And remember that in the class of inclusiveness is the most important around all of us. If we're one, we're stronger together as a team. 
Um, so focus on those strengths of your team, put them in the places where they belong and, and help them grow in, in their strengths. And you'll find that naturally everything around them will look beautiful too. Even though, even the failures that they make, they'll learn to find positives from those failures at the same time. Um, so I, I just hope they, any student that hears this, that knows that failure is always learning. Oh, that is so well put. Um, I, I agree. And I would love for anybody who reads that article to, there's so many different pieces of advice from the article that we uncovered. Uh, but really on the basic level, especially in the field of adult ed, we are funded to address barriers, to fix deficits. And I really feel like if every single educator out there just turned that in their mind and started to see only see their students as much as possible, or maybe even just set a goal to only see them through their assets, only see them through their strengths. Because what happens, they, they all come with them. They just don't know, or, you know, we don't, we don't always know what our strengths are. We, none of us do sometimes, you know, we focus on our mistakes that we make. Um, students are going to see themselves differently when they are seen and spoken to and treated with the kind of respect that comes from seeing, okay, there's all these problems going on, but wow, look at that asset. Look at that strength. Did you even realize you had that? They see themselves differently. They see their fellow students differently. That's going to help their students. They're going to see their teachers differently too. Imagine if students started seeing teachers by only their strengths instead of their deficits too. How beautiful would that be? It's transformative, it's liberatory, and that's what the article is all about. So that, that's what I hope. I hope readers um, take away, um, I'm gonna hit up what Megan said. Um, we're all different. We all have different um, reasons why we're learning. We all have different reasons why we started so late. Um, we all have different um, ideas, um, different um, creeds, different religions, different backgrounds. And um, I just want people to walk away with the feeling that anybody can do this, anybody, both educators and um, um, students, that they can walk away, that they can feel that they belong in this place. I grew up in a deficit-based approach where um, I was always based on what I didn't know, not what I wanted to know or what I needed to know. All I was um, based on what level I was, and then I was put in that little category in my classroom. When I was introduced to the strength-based approach, it was it was eye-opening, it was encouraging. My, my self-esteem changed. It was different. It felt like I was being part of my education. Like I was taking part in, in myself getting smarter. And um, it just seemed like it, it it took less time by doing it this way than if we would have um, just picked me up where I left off um, 40 years ago when I first left school. So I think um, I, the most thing that I want readers to take away is, is no matter what age they are, no matter where they come from or who they are, that they can succeed in these, in these kind of programs and not only succeed, but they can also become leaders in these kind of programs. That's terrific. I'm, you know, just envisioning programs that are completely transformed, the, you know, wall, the doors are completely thrown open and people are, are flooding in ready to change our futures um, because they, they now have that uh, sense of, uh, of themselves and their, their, their strengths. So that's, the, I, I'm hoping that lots of people read this before we um, wrap up. Are there any additional comments that you all would like to share with the field? I just want to thank you very much for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to speak. And I hope that my words um, resonate with somebody across this nation. And again, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Arnold. Oh, go ahead, Megan. I'll go after you. <laughs> Mine is very, very much similar to Arnold's. Thank you so much for the education and the care. Um, I couldn't ask for a better family, even though we're across the world from each other. Um, this all came because people care. And of course, Laura's brilliant mind. So thank you so much for everything. Oh my goodness. 
All right. I just need to say that I think adult educators in this country really want to be student-centered. They want to be participatory. They want students to take on these roles and take that learning even further. And I just wanna say, take the time, take time to get to know your students. The, the reason we have such a great team here is because we know each other really well. We took time, um, we listened and learned from each other. We acted and reflected together. If teachers could take that time, I really think all of the advice that the students gave in this article is just, it's all going to fall right into place easily. And yes, thank you so much, Kristen, for having us. Thank you to everybody who reads our article in this country. How fantastic. We're super excited that our voices are going further and longer because we did that. We wrote that article. So yeah, thank you. Well, it has been an honor to speak with you all today. You inspire me every time. I, I'm always sitting down writing notes about things that you say, you know, beautiful failures and, and just everything. You, get, you, you are an amazing group. So thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. We really do appreciate your dedication to the field of adult education and are so grateful for the impact that your work is making on the lives of learners around the country. Um, and I now turn to those of you who are listening um, and encourage you, if you have not already, Rob, read this article, I please go ahead and go to www.coabe.org and you can then click on the journal tab and you can buy individual articles or the edition in its entirety. You will not regret it. Thank you. Thank you.